I thought it would be a fitting time to release a video that I recorded at the end of 2023 as part of a series where I go into a deeper dive into the uh, what's called the angel numbers 111 through 555. Now, my approach is going to be different from most of what you'll find online. It's not just a video giving an overview. I'm going more in depth and it's a, we'll call it a mini lecture. Here it is. Hope you enjoy 720astrology.com. Know the stars to know yourself. Peace. We now arrive at 222. And of course, the primary number here that we're focusing on is the number two. So we wanna take time here to delve into its meaning by starting with its Hebrew name, Stein. And it's spelled here with the, the Shin, the Ta, the Yud, Mim. Now that adds up to 750. So the Hebrew word for the number two has a numeric value of 750. So we're gonna look at some other words that have the same numeric value to kind of give us some deeper indicators of the symbolic nature of the two. Now this word here, now bear with me, I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation, but I'm gonna attempt Mudvin, or Mudvin, Mudvin. That's a mem, a dalit, a va, and nun final. Um, it has a numeric value of 750, the same as Stein, which is again the Hebrew word for two. Now, here's what's interesting about this word. Again, I'm going to say Mudvin. It means contest, quarrel, exertion, contraction, extension. Look at these two. Contraction, extension. They are opposites. This is like with weight training. We contract or we could say flexion and extension. The flexion of the muscle, the extension of the muscle. The contraction, the extension. Now, quarrel, contest. That means there's opposition again. So the number two, if we just think about in astrology, when do we have an other? We have an other when we get to Libra, which is the sign of relationship. Aries is me. Libra is me and another, as in two. And the seventh house, which is occupied by Libra in the natural zodiac. One of the key words for the seventh house is natural enemies. I'm sorry, not natural enemies, but open enemies. So your open enemy is someone that you would contest or could possibly quarrel with. It represents duality. So he, even in this word here, Mudvin, we see an element of the number two represented, okay? Another word that has the same value as 750 is Mekshebet, means thoughts. Mekshebet, thoughts. Your brain, our brains, have two major hemispheres, the left and the right hemispheres left brain, right brain, linear, circular. So our thoughts, the element of thinking is produced out of some type of dualistic mechanism, the brain. So again, points back to the number or the, the two. This is about as obvious as it gets. Here again, we have the word for two, Stein, but we see it also means pairs. 750 pairs. So we see these different representations, whether it's pairs, thoughts, contests, contraction, extension. We see we can take liberty here and say this is pointing to something dualistic or representing the number two. So again, so I just wrote it out. The above speaks to the world of duality we live in. And it reminds us that we are embodying the energy of vibration too.
things come out of conflict. Perfection comes out of resistance. So here's the base that we're gonna move forward from for the number two. Okay, now the number two coincides with the Hebrew letter bet. Bet is also the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Bet means container, duality, house, feminine, receptive. The bit naturally takes on the qualities of the number two because by it being the second number, it immediately suggests duality because it comes immediately after the one, meaning the one has been divided by the time we get to bit. In dividing itself, the one is also receiving itself. So it's a container, it's a house. By it being receptive, it's also feminine. It's the feminine principle. Even the glyph itself suggests femininity. It's receiving the one, moving into it. Spelled out, we have bet here, represented with the bet, a yud, and a ta. Adds up to 412. Now having the same vibration of 412 is the word hevet. It's the he, aleph, va, ta. What's interesting in this word is if we take he as being like an article, the, and it's like aleph is the beginning and ta is the end. And this is even the complete spelling of ta here is the ta and the va. So it's like it's saying the beginning and the end, all encased in this word here. Bet is another example of containing all creation in it. As it receives the all in all, the divine force, it receives it. It receives alpha and omega. Now, a cognate of this word means desire, longing, lust, craving, delight, desirable. Now, these appear to be very base longings, base expressions, desire. What, what some people would say, lower nature, desire, longing, lust, craving, delight, desirable. But there's something here about the necessity, uh, at one point, the necessity of having this animalistic root radical desire, this drive, this urging. But there's also a challenge here encoded to not get stuck at just desire, longing, lust, craving, for it to be a catalyst and not to be the end result. Because this catalyst is what's necessary to pull the aleph to the bet, because the bet is the feminine. It is receptive. So there must be a desire principle, it would appear, to draw the aleph to the bet, which is part of the creation process or the unfolding. So we see bet as the first stage in a greater reality that's unfolding as we keep going with 222. Okay, so next in the lineup we have calf with the numeric value of 20. We've got a lot to discuss here, relatively speaking, about calf. And we'll start with recognizing that we've already touched on calf with 111. We also are gonna revisit calf when we talk about 555, so this is a clue. Obviously, this is of great significance in this series. Shows up three times, but we have to discuss it. Let's revisit what calf symbolically means. The closed fist, the crowning achievement, the crowning achievement. Spelled out, calf consists of a calf and a final pay, and they have the value of 100. And so with that, 
We now go back to another letter we've already discussed, which is the cough. Cough has a value of 100. So we see this and remember what we talked about the cough, about that leg. It's the only non-final letter that has a leg that goes below the line and that it would suggest that it's boring a hole and that hole can be for creation and destruction, the, the beginning of a cycle and the conclusion. We see here that we can deduce that this is a reminder that unity and holiness slash wholeness still exist in the duality. Because whether this cough is born a whole to start creation or to end it, it's talking about a circle. And a circle in itself is whole. The circle contains everything it needs. It's full, it's complete, it's 100%. So although we're dealing with the base number two, which is multiplied to get to 20 with the, the calf, it's still a reminder by calf spelled out having the same numeric value as the cough that unity, holiness, and wholeness still exist in the duality. Now, we go further looking at a cognate of calf. It means the curve or hollow of the hand, the palm or the hollow of the foot slash sole. And if you think about it involving the hands and the feet, then we have 20 phalanges in total, five fingers on, on each hand, five toes on each foot, five times four, 20. So we go further and we see that the soul is reminiscent of Malkuth. Now, if you remember, Malkuth is the bottom sphere, sphere, I'm sorry, on the tree of life. And Malkuth means kingdom. And Malkuth coincides with the earth. So Malkuth being at the bottom of the front side of the tree of life, we can associate it with the feet the, or the foot the soul. Now here's what's interesting. When we take the word Malkuth and spell it out, Mem, Lamet, Kaf, Va, Ta, it's 496. Now let's start reducing that. 496 reduces to 19. 19, 1 and 9, 10, that reduces to 1. The Kaf spelled out, Kaf and a final pay equals 100. 100 reduces to 1. So same vibration here. Malkuth, the soul. S-O-L-E, soul. So in other words, earth, it would suggest, is the place of the crowning achievement. Thus, earth, or Malkuth, means kingdom. A cognate, another cognate of calf means hollow, as in hollow of Jacob's thigh. This reverts to the Torah story or Old Testament story in the Bible where Jacob wrestles with the angel throughout the night over into the break of day, found in Genesis 32, 26 through 29. Now basically what happens is he's injured in the hollow of his thigh. Hollow. We'll come back to that. This cognate can also refer to a handle, a dish, a container. Now, where do we see container? That was associated with the bit. So here we have the same word association with the higher octave of the bit, which is the calf. This can also mean valuables. So here's a deduction. Whereas bet may show root desires. When I say root, we're talking about bet is receiving archetypal energy. We're dealing with raw, pure energy with bet. The calf then we may assume is a refining or refinement of that energy. Calf may speak to a greater display of control. We refine that energy through control, which goes back to the story of Jacob injuring, being injured in the hollow of the thigh, which that story is higher and lower self. I left that off. That should be self. Higher and lower self are in a duel until injury promotes 
enlightenment. And that enlightenment is the refinement of the pure energy received in bed to where we now have containment, not just raw containment, but containment elevated to where it becomes valuables. Not saying that it wasn't already valuable, but we are starting to realize its value through the work we have done striving against ourselves, higher versus lower, calf. Okay, now the final number in the sequence, 200, associated with Resh. Resh, the cosmic container, poverty, and the head principle energy, all encased in Resh. Now, those don't seem to mesh together. Poverty and the principle as the leader, the head, the cosmic container. Interesting, we still have some form of duality here, we see, between poverty and the principal energy. Because poverty is like being the last to be impoverished. And to have abundance is like being the principal or the leader or the first, the last and the first. But this is all about the cosmic container. But that'll make more sense as we go along. The cosmic container is about context. Now context, that means what is the, the nature of the environment that a particular contemplation or particular happening is within? What's the environment? The environment gives us context. What's the cycle? What's the, there are several components that can contribute to context. The timing, the surroundings, the environment, the history, the, the intent, the objective, are so many things that help contribute to us having context. But we can summarize this, this contextual container or frame as reason. Reasoning faculties. The ability to step outside of a situation and reason and see the bigger picture or the contextual perspective. This is a quote. At the cosmic level, every action, every expressed statement, every thought has simultaneous multiple and valid contexts. Each context provides for the possibility of our inner movement, a movement that chooses a context by which to interpret any situation. In a nutshell, as above, so below, as within, so without. Our ability to maintain a reasoning capacity allows us to give context to the things that we encounter or what we deal with here in this human human form. And that quote came from the book, The Inner Meaning of the Hebrew Letters. Moving on. The resh then is fate that still allows free will to provide context. Fate is things that are destined to happen. The word fate means what is written will be. So things are, certain things are already written, already prescribed, designated to happen. Things happen to us. Our free will provides the context, meaning we have the free will to use reason to balance out things and to see the greater, bigger picture. In astrology, that's ninth house, that's Sagittarius, a philosophy, a perspective to develop a perspective, uh, which is higher learning. Higher learning is the ability to develop a perspective or context and or to reason. So it is to subjectify, which makes it personal, the objective, which is impersonal. To personalize things that happen that appear to be outside of my scope of control or my range of control. Spelled out, the resh is a resh, a yud, and a shin, adding up to 510. That resh spelled out is a directly reverse of the word sha'ar. Sha'ar is song, poem, hymn, singing, enchantment. Thus, 
Resh is the listening to, the understanding, the digestion, and the contribution to the universe, which universe means one song. And when you study astrology, we're studying the music of the cosmic spheres. There's a song that each of our lives is attempting to to orchestrate. We are an orchestra. We are we are members of an or a grand symphony. So if the opposite of resh, which is sha'ar, means song or poem, then if we take the direct opposite, then it's the unfolding or the understanding of that song and our own contribution to that one song, resh. All right as we attempt to draw a conclusion around 222 based on what we have uncovered. <clears throat> we conclude that we are composed of cosmic energy, charged with the task of raising our energy, increasing our cognitive awareness as to tap into the greater mind, reminiscent of the hermetic axiom, the mind is all and all is mental. 222 can be a reminder to give careful consideration to what you have slash possess and its management. It can be a reminder of the necessity of developing a personal and clear perspective and the recognition of its impact on the outcome, learning, and evolution of and involving any situation. Meaning you are the master of your fate, you're the captain of your soul. You have primal archetypal energy that comes in and is received. But you also have the ability to elevate that energy through your understanding of it and reasoning faculties related to it. This in my humble estimate is a path that 222 is encouraging us to, if we're not embarking upon it, if we're already upon it, to continue down this path, to not lose sight, to be mindful of what you are and what you have, and to elevate it through the reasoning faculties, which allows you to give context to any situation so that you become the master.